I'm in the Peak District National Park between Sheffield and Manchester. The hill that I'm on is called Higator, and right now I'm on the phone to Ryan, who's in a completely different location, and we're about to do this challenge, which is kind of technically a bit more complicated, but we're all sort of looking forward to what happens, we don't really know. I'm Ryan Trainer, and I'm here at Yorkshire Arts Base in Sheffield, waiting for a bunch of young people to arrive to take part in this distributed performance thing. And we've also got a camera live at Hopeworks, which is down the road, and I, also my granny is gonna take part from Rotherham. And I think a few other people are gonna take part, but I'm not so sure. I'm a bit nervous that something's gonna go wrong, but I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. We thought about different options and we looked into like how to use Max MSP to kind of synchronize patches between computers so we could send a patch somewhere and then control it from where we were at home but all the audio and everything is generated on the receiving computer sort of so there's not a lot of bandwidth needed so we kind of came up with this system and the next step for it would be to kind of write it as a browser rather than as a Max patch we got a programmer James Bradbury on board to kind of do the JavaScript stuff. And this one, it was commissioned by No Bounds Festival. Part of our idea for that was how can we make a kind of drum machine that's multiplayer? That's really what we'll be exploring today is just like getting a group of people together. But the, the thing that we'll be doing is just like making noises with it and patterns and see how we can kind of control it as a group remotely. It should be interesting if it works. I'm with Hap and Mark and Ryan and we're going against the clock fact.
Hello. We're making a film, but we'll be going in a few minutes. No problem. Yeah, what it is, we're making these guys work for a video channel, like an online video channel. And I'm a musician based in Sheffield, and they're doing a documentary about my work. No, it's all right, it's all right. It's good to know that someone's out here looking for stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're just about finished. It's all right. We just saw the computer screen and thought, hmm. It's quite an unusual thing, I guess, isn't it? We don't, we don't see that many laptops up here, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry to disturb you. <laughs> Yeah, the time restriction, it sort of, I don't know, I wasn't really aware of how many minutes we'd actually done when, because it was just like so all over the place. I'm like, have, have we done 10 minutes yet? I think it was like three minutes in. <laughs> but it's a shame that the group aren't here to, the, the kids aren't here to like actually 
talk about it as well, but they had to go and, cause, and eat pizza and get off. <laughs> so I'm like stuck here trying to explain it. It's so chaotic and also so cool because you're interacting with everyone and you don't know even like who it is. It's like, who's pressing the button that I'm pressing? Who's like messing around with the, the thing? It's so cool. I enjoyed being on the top of a hill getting cold. The music was really erratic and people were going crazy. I don't know what the kids were like in the gallery, but it seems like they were having a good time. Now we're on the side of the road waiting for the taxi in the middle of the night. Getting cold, that's not the taxi. There was a whole bunch of people on there who were clearly just doing random stuff. The way I learn how to do stuff is to do random stuff and see what happens. And they were doing that, and so it's like, how do I respond to that? So I was like, finding things that I could do that didn't interrupt what they wanted to do. Or finding things that I could do that didn't kind of like conflict with what, what they were doing. So I was like holding the clock on certain points and things like that to create like points of repetition. And it was constantly about responding to what other people were doing and also giving people space as well. You know, sometimes standing back and just not be too present, I guess. It's very interesting and it makes very cool sounds and I really like it. I'm gonna use it way more than, than just like, oh my God, what is everywhere? Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it a track. Uh, maybe Sprawl describes it better. I think maybe what I would have done in retrospect would be to start and, and then sort of give more directions to each of the participants. Yeah, maybe now I would have sort of said, right, let's take it steady for a bit at first and try and make something that's a bit more focused or linear. But when there's people in different rooms and all that, or, or, or on tops of hills, it's just like impossible to coordinate that. As well as like, <laughs> uh, like delivering a workshop to a group of kids you never met before. They were all starving and they've been at school till six o'clock. <laughs> it's not ideal for them. <laughs> if I had more time, we don't need more time, I guess. Like. Like, if I had more time, I'd just make the same track, but longer. Well, we thought it'd be a, a, a challenge for us. Can we do that with multiple, multiple people in one day, in multiple groups? And thought it would be a good experiment for us to see if it would come across in any way in, in this, like, format. It was commissioned by Hope works and no bounds and we've been doing workshops and stuff for them and we just thought it'd be a good way to document the project yeah I, I, I guess just sort of like promote what the thing is get other people to use it and if yeah it's a it's just the website what is it www.intersymmetric.xyz yeah you just load the website Hopefully there's someone else on at the same time and you can just play together and give it a go and see if you can do anything a bit more structured than what we just did in 10 minutes. Well, I, I never met those kids. So those, those kids came down for the first time I met Ryan this evening. And it seems like they were kind of quite excited and, and messing about. And that's kind of what we like, you know. We, we would, it's much more interesting to, to, a, to work with that than if someone comes along and they're really cautious or like oh can i press this button now or you know i've worked with people where they really have a, a way of doing it which is about okay you explain it to me and then i'll press a button and see what happens you know rather than just pressing buttons and seeing what happens so it's for me it's kind of nice that 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 is what happened that like they all just went for it and started messing about and actually for me musically it had a kind of character and a flow that I really like you know because um, you know it reminded me of a lot of stuff that things like farmer's manual and stuff like that you know like kind of quite things that just don't settle into a regular pattern. It's all synthesis that's done in the browser so using JavaScript Partly using this API that's called like Tone.js and there are some models within that that are like a percussion, well like a bass drum or a metal kind of synthesizer. And then we made one that's this more like free operator FM thing. We basically just made a few kind of macro sort of presets of, of each 
kind of sound module, so like the bass drum. I think there's, I don't know, like 20 different um, presets that interpolate between each other. The modules themselves had a specific character and we just chopped the ones together that we liked and yeah, kind of like just quite standard drum machine sort of thing really. My process is set up a system, explore it and respond to what you are hearing. That's kind of what I usually do and that's kind of what I did here. Yeah, the system worked as I planned. I mean, the thing is, there's a difference between planning what the system does and planning what the music should sound like. And I don't plan, like I'm more interested in like the, the character of the system. And then we wait and see what the music turns out like. Do you see what I mean? So it's not like I have a plan for like, oh yeah, it should be like sort of like a techno track and there should be this bit here and that bit there. That's not the level of planning that I'm interested in. Well, if I could recommend a, a, a thing for beginners to work with, like I, I think that, that this thing that we've made actually would would not be a bad starting place. Making kind of basic, well, complex systems, but having like simple interfaces. For me to play music, I kind of need that, and that also works can work with people that don't have musical training and stuff.